Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Snook with section 4.7, Inverse Trigonometric Functions, and we are going to do this section in one day. Our objective is to evaluate and graph inverse sine functions, evaluate and graph the other inverse trig functions, and evaluate compositions of trig functions. So let's get started. So first off, just a bit of notation from the textbook. The inverse sine function can be called arc sine or sine with that minus one. That means inverse sine. And the first thing we're going to do is evaluate some inverse sines. So I'm um, going to keep in mind that the sine function looks like this. And it goes between positive 1 and negative 1. So the range of your sine is negative 1 to 1. And the domain is um, all real numbers. So when I go to do the inverse, my domain for my inverse is going to be negative 1 to 1. Keep that in mind. So for the arc sine of negative 1 half, use your unit circle, and you will see that that happens at negative pi over 6. And then the inverse sine of root 3 over 2, you're going to see that that's going to happen at pi over 3. And then the arc sine of 2, well a moment ago I said it has to be between negative 1 and positive 1, so this one does not exist. Now for graphing. Just as a reminder, anytime you graph an inverse, swap the x and y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the table for the sine function, and then I'm going to swap the x and the y, and we'll see how that looks in a graph. Okay, so I filled in my graph for the sine function, and all of those values you can get from your unit circle. They are also standard values, which I do expect that you would have memorized. So make sure you know what these are. And then for the inverse, I just swapped. So the Y column went to the X, and the X column went to the Y. So now let's take a look at this graph and see what it's going to look like. So at negative 1, I have a point at negative pi over 2. At negative root 2 over 2, I am at point uh, at negative pi over 4. And then negative 1 half, I'm at pi over 6, 0. And then the same thing on the other side. 1 half would be pi over 6. Root 2 over 2 is going to be pi over 4 and then 1 is going to be pi over 2. And so our graph is going to look like this. Okay. And it just stops. And the reason is we have the sine function defined, or inverse sine function is defined, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And the reason is that's where it's a function. If you keep going, this is going to um, keep repeating and then you have, um, you're going to fail the vertical line test. So for it to stay a function, we restrict the domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, and then the range 
because it's the inverse of the sine um, is negative 1 to 1. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. The graph stops. Now let's go on to our next part. We're going to evaluate other inverse trig functions. So the arc cosine of root 2 over 2. So if you look on your unit circle, square root of 2 over 2 is going to go with pi over 4. So now what's the inverse cosine of negative 1? And the answer to that one is going to be pi. So if you think about your unit circle, right over here you have the coordinates negative 1, 0, and that's pi. So since your cosine has to be negative 1, the inverse cosine is going to be pi. Arctangent of 0. Okay, so we need to figure out what um, the arctangent of 0 is. If you remember that tangent is sine over cosine, then tangent equals 0 when sine equals 0. So therefore, your arctangent of 0 happens to be at 0, because that's where your sine is going to equal 0. Now your inverse tangent of negative 1. So you need to think of where does tangent equal negative 1, and that happens at negative pi over 4. So here's our answers. Now using a calculator, we can do some approximations. So if I wanted the arc tangent of negative 8.25, I would just grab my calculator, and on the TI-84s you press second, and then you press tangent. So second, and then the tangent button. And then you're going to put in negative 8.45, and we get negative 83. 0.25 degrees. Make sure you're in degree mode. Now let's do the arc sine of 0 0.2447. So you're going to hit second, and then you're going to hit the sine button, and you're going to type in 0.2447. Press enter, and you get 14.16 degrees. Now we're going to do arc cosine of 2. So press the second button and then press the cosine button. And you should get an error. And this is because the um, Domain of cosine goes negative 1 to positive 1, so then, sorry, the range of cosine goes negative 1 to positive 1, so therefore your domain for your arc cosine is negative 1 to 1, so at 2 it's not defined, so this one does not exist. All right, so now that we know how to evaluate some of these, let's go ahead and we're going to graph, first we'll graph cosine and the inverse cosine, and then we're going to do the inverse tangent. So just like before, I'm going to fill in the table for the cosine, and then I'm going to swap x and y to get the points for graphing inverse cosine. All right, so I've done my tables and I have done the swap, so I am now ready to graph the inverse cosine. So when x is 1, y is 0. And then when x is root 3 over 2, y is going to be pi over 6, which is around about there. 
When x is 1 half, y is pi over 3. And then when x is 0, y is pi over 2. And then I'm going to continue. Uh, when x is negative 1 half, y is 2 pi over 3, which puts it right about there. And then let's do negative 1 and pi. And so I have enough points here that I can just do my graph. It's going to look something like this. And notice how that graph just stops. And again, the graph has to stop, otherwise it's not a function anymore. So our domain is going to be 0 to pi. Getting it backwards. Domain is negative 1 to 1. And then our range is going to be 0 to pi. So the um, inverse uh, sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but for the cosine, it's 0 to pi. So anything outside that area, we can't do. All right. So let's do our tangent. So tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. And again, just reverse those coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my graph. So I have a point at 0, 0. I have a point at negative 1, negative pi over 4. And I have a point at 1, pi over 4. Now I want to point something else. Point something out. Okay, so... Where does tangent of x, where does that not exist? Where do you get it does not exist? And to, to answer that question, just remember that tangent of x equals sine of x over cosine of x which means that when that denominator goes to zero, it doesn't exist. And cosine is zero at pi over two and negative pi over two. That means we're gonna have asymptotes. And these are not your normal vertical asymptotes. Remember, this is an inverse. So asymptotes on inverses, if you remember, are going to be horizontal. Well, it looks like I missed when I plot this point. Let me fix that. So your tangent, your sorry, your inverse tangent is going to have some horizontal asymptotes. So the graph is going to look like this. Start over by the asymptote, go through the free, three points, and then go up towards the asymptote again. So that is what your inverse tangent looks like. Now let's look at our domain and range again. The domain... This one's all real numbers. But your range is going to be restricted. It can only exist between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And that is not inclusive because those are the asymptotes. All right, the last thing we're going to do today is we're going to evaluate compositions of our trig functions. Now, a composition means there's a function inside of a function. So look at A. We're going to do the tangent 
of the arctan of negative 5. Well, tangent and arctangent are inverses of each other. Which means I can just pull negative 5 out. So my answer is negative 5. Now I'm going to do the arc sine of the sine of 5 pi over 3. Again, these are inverses. All right. And then when I do the um, arc sine of the sine, the way I think of it is they just undo each other. So my answer is 5 pi over 3. But my arc sine is restricted to between positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So I need to find a coterminal angle that's in between those two values. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to subtract 2 pi from this. And that's going to give me, let's go ahead and do this. I have a 10 pi over 6. I'm going to put this over 6, minus 12 pi. So I'm going to get a negative pi over 3. That's my answer there. So make sure you're staying inside our um, um, range of negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right, cosine of the inverse cosine of pi. Those are inverses, so they just undo each other. That pi comes out, and pi is within the range that I'm allowed for my um, inverse cosine, so that's just going to be my answer is pi. Now, D and E, those are going to be a little bit more challenging, and that's because um, you can't just do this in your head. So go ahead and use a calculator for this. So first up on the calculator, do the arc cosine of 2 over 3. And so when I do arc cosine of 2 over 3, that means press the second button, cosine, that's going to give me the arc cosine, so second cosine. And I'm going to put in my fraction 2 over 3. So I'm getting 48.19 degrees. And I'm going to take the tangent of that. So I'm going to say tangent, and I'm going to use my answer button. And I'm just going to copy my answer right in. And my answer is 1.12. Now, E, you can do by hand. Check this out. We're looking for the cosine of the inverse sine of 3 over 5. And that's a negative. I scribbled over there. There's a negative 3 over 5. So first I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a picture of my triangle. Here's my negative 3. There's theta. I don't know what r is, and I don't know what x is. But if once I have x and r, I have the cosine. But look carefully, and I have a negative 3 over 5, so it turns out that r is 5. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can remember your Pythagorean theorem and do negative 3 squared plus x squared equals 5 squared. You're going to get 9 plus x squared equals 25. x squared equals 16. x equals 4. Or if you remember your Pythagorean triples, There's one of them that's 3, 4, 5. And notice I have a 3 and a 5 already. So if I know my triples, I can automatically say x equals 4. So now I know what x is. I am ready to just take the cosine of the angle theta. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. It should be 4 over 5. All right, that's it for